Hey, yo. Welcome. Welcome to Q&A number four, five, six, whatever. Roll it. Ah, stay hydrated, kids. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano the Third. Y'all guys are the third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see, consider becoming part of the family at the end of this video. Chances are you're already a subscriber, though, because no one's clicking on a fucking random guy's Q&A. You know what I'm saying? I really enjoyed doing the last q and I like putting Q&As on Instagram. I've done like two. I think I've done the last q and I did was already maybe like three weeks ago. But if this is your first Q&A here, let me tell you how these things go down. People who are subscribed, and give donations to Patreon. They help support the bills around here and keep me in front of the camera and keep me entertaining y'all and y'all entertaining me. So their questions are guaranteed to get answered when I put them on there. And if you're not a supporter of Patreon or you don't have the money to support Patreon or maybe that's just not your vibe, that's completely fine. You can also get questions in in the Discord as well because most questions for future Q and A's are gonna come from one of three places. Guaranteed on Patreon, most of the other questions coming from Discord and then a sprinkle question here and there from Instagram. Those are generally the three ways to get questions at me. But let's just jump right on into these questions, fam. And first one we got on Patreon, Jake Alper. I believe it's pronounced Alper. I don't think there's another way to pronounce that, but if there is, my bad. He says, hope you're happy and healthy, Ernest. Back at you, famo. Do you think you'll ever do reactions slash breakdowns slash commentary videos on comedy clips? Yes, I've been wanting to get into that. The only thing is that I'm such a heavy fan of comedy. Like if I'm not recording shit right here, I'm either watching comedy shows or I'm watching stand-up specials so the problem that I've run into is that like everything that people want me to react to I basically have seen it already I've watched all of Jim Gaffigan's specials I've watched all of Sebastian Maniscalco specials I watched Bo Burnham's two specials I've watched Seinfeld stand up live I've watched all Dave Chappelle specials I've watched John Mulaney specials I've watched Aziz's specials like pretty much most major comedians that are at that level where they get their own one hour long special I've basically seen them all so if you can get me a comedian who I have haven't seen, I'll be glad to react. I'll be glad to give commentary on them. Actually, if I would have just read further into the question, I would have got my answer right there. I actually have not seen any Norm Macdonald specials, but Bill Burr, I've definitely seen all of his specials. I really like Bill Burr's comedy because it's very rough. It's very, I don't give a fuck. He says things that are not politically correct and he don't give a fuck about it. Just like me, that's the way I am on this channel. Other than when I react to maybe like NF or any Christian hip hop, like Reach Records guys, I cuss on this channel. I say whatever, whatever's coming in my mind. I say jokes and like my my goal is to get so big that I'm cancelable, you know? Like I want Twitter to do its thing on me, cancel me, and I go down burning in flames and I'll be like, I made it to the top, baby. You know what I'm saying? But even then I won't get canceled because I don't give a fuck enough to get canceled. Hope that answers your question. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you being a subscriber on Patreon and being a subscriber of the channel. Really means a lot to me. Next up, we got Ryan Brown. I'm 100% positive. I have not screwed that name up, but he says by alignment of the moons and stars, who is your celebrity crush? Bro, I'm not a player, I just crush a lot. So I got a lot of them. Boom, right out the gate, Rihanna. No question about it. Take all my money, take all my child support, give me a child and we're all good. Rihanna's the goat of my crushes, no, no doubt about it. Next, Emma Stone. Emma Stone, she's that girl for me. That like raspy, like deep voice or the deeper like voice for a female. Ooh, it just does it, you know what I'm saying? And like her comedy and her smile and just her little faces that she makes. Love it. Next, we got Aubrey Plaza. Yo, there's nothing really to say about Aubrey Plaza. You know what I'm saying? Parks and Rec. She's that weird like outcast girl that's kind of cute and like funny. But then when you see her dress up, you're like, oh, damn, I didn't know you had that in you. You got me feeling some type of way, guh. You know what I'm saying? And then last but not least, probably photo finish actually with Rihanna, Vanessa Hudgens. Ooh, I love that woman, actually. It was to the point where she like when she broke up with her longtime boyfriend, I was like, all right, here's my chance, even knowing that I have no fucking chance. But you know what I'm saying? Shoot or shoot, RIP Kobe. I appreciate the question, Ryan, that was a good one. Next up, we got Eric Grimms. Eric, I know I got reactions to get to your request, bro. I promise I'm gonna get to them. But he asks, what's your setup? AKA, like, what, is, what does this look like here? Headphones, DAC, amp, camera, microphone, camera on a tripod, that kind of thing. This is my whole setup right here. You're looking at the whole thing. Rode, Video Mic Pro, got that on a Joby Gorillapod. Then I got the Sony a7 III with, I don't know if you can see that. It says 16 to 35 G Master lens, F 2.8 is the aperture. This lens costs just as much as the camera. So this portion right here is about 60% of my overall cost, I would say. Got it just sitting on a basic ass tripod. It's actually a monopod with tripod feet. 
So that way I could go monopod mode, but then I can also tripod it up. You know what I'm saying? This is the light. This is the only light source that I have. It's a Philips Hue lamp. I move it from that corner right there. I move it right there whenever I'm recording. But next step is to get a light and then a, and then a lavalier mic. Probably and also another road video will go or something like that. And then the Mac Daddy of all Macs. This is a $5,000 MacBook Pro loaded up with the entire Adobe suite. One terabyte of solid state hard drive, 16 gigabytes of DD5 RAM memory and touch bar, which is basically useless. Hate that shit. I do like the keys. The keys are dope, the butterfly keys. Big ass trackpad. Spit all over the screen from when I'm recording. I definitely got to clean it. But that's my entire setup. Oh, and then the mouse, obviously, magic mouse. But that's my entire setup. You're looking at it right there. Pretty basic, hopefully to upgrade the light, hopefully to upgrade the mic. But I appreciate the question, man. Always love talking about gear. Gear is my shit. Next up, we got John Schwartzcheck. He says, in your opinion, who is the better artist, NF or Wit? Personally, I think that NF is a far better artist than Wit is at the current moment. But that's just because Wit is like a little more underground than NF. NF is a little more marketable than Wit is for some reason. But Wit puts out bangers. He puts out very conceptual songs and I like that kind of shit. There's a lot of creativity in Wit's music. I actually think that Wit has more, he has more range in terms of subject matter that he talks about versus NF because NF is kind of in this same lane to the point where I think that if NF's not project doesn't, if his next project doesn't veer away from the same lane, I think a lot of people, especially the casual listener, are going to get very bored because this is three albums in a row that he's kind of been on the same topic. The thing about NF is that like he doesn't care whether or not people get bored because his core fan base is gonna fuck with it regardless. So if he doesn't switch it up, for me at least, it's gonna get kind of repetitive. And that's kind of and it's kind of where wit shines. The width of what he can talk about is much wider than what NF is currently doing at the moment, if that makes any sense. I hope that that answers you. But John, I appreciate your Patreon subscription as well, man. Next up on Patreon, we got Carlos Guevara. I'm assuming that that's right, because that's definitely a Hispanic ass last name. So I'm assuming that I pronounced that one right. Do you think 21 Pilots should bring back Mute Math to make another sessions or play live together? When they did the Mute Math sessions, it was right after their blurry face album they were like on that meteoric like rise to the top but now they're so far up there i don't even know if they would have time to do a mute math session again i believe that they'll keep making sessions records because i think that tyler is just that creative enough that he'll want to flip songs and make them sound completely different just to get his creative juices out there but i don't know about bringing in a whole nother band for a collabo session personally i really did enjoy the mute math sessions i just don't know how feasible that is anymore with how like demanded 21 pilots is these days next we got melissa dean melissa was trying to get into the patreon i know you've been wanting to support the patreon for some time so it means the world to me that you found a way to get in it really does mean everything melissa dean asks, what mistakes have you made in past relationships and do you think you've learned enough to settle down oh that one's kind of tough so I made plenty of mistakes in relationships. I've obviously been, I've been scared of commitment before. I've given a lot of my time to the wrong people and wasting my time basically, knowing that things are never gonna progress. I have let relationships go on too long because I've been scared. I've been fearful of hurting the person that I was with, with a breakup. When really breaking up was the right thing to do and it does hurt more short term, in the long run is better because it shows that you respect that person's time. It shows you respect that person's energy as opposed to just letting something drop drag out for months, which you know is which you know should have ended like a long time ago. So there's that. Then I've gone too quickly into relationships before. I've gotten into relationships that were almost physically impossible to, to, to flesh out in terms of the amount of time that I can spend with somebody. There's a lot that I've done wrong in relationships and it's always a two-sided coin. There's a lot that the other people have done wrong as well. But yes, eventually you. the second part is, do you want marriage slash kids? Of course I do. I'm just not out here trying to get anybody pregnant and then I gotta pay child support for 18 years. So if anybody's getting pregnant, that chick is gonna be the one. Next, we got a name that I'm 100% gonna butcher. A-I-V-I, is that I-E-V, A-V? And then, pff, if that's not bad enough, we got this name that I haven't been able to pronounce for 30 years. N-G-U-Y-E-N. -E is that Gian? Gian? Is the N silent? N Gian? Let me know how to pronounce it. I would wanna know, I'm 30 years old, I should know how to pronounce this name. But they ask, have you ever traveled overseas if so where have you been i have never traveled overseas the only person in my family that's been overseas is my brother he went to go do play basketball or like some camp overseas that they went to and he was there for like two weeks he was in italy just all in that little like area in that region he went to the vatican he saw the sistine chapel the whole shit but i would want to travel overseas
overseas. I would want to go to Greece. I would want to go to Italy. Obviously not right now with the whole COVID shit, but you know what I'm saying. I would want to go to Paris, UK, obviously. Really, I'd be down to go anywhere. I'd want to go to Australia, would want to go to Sydney, would want to go to New Zealand, all these places, but just never gotten around to it. One, it's mad expensive. Two, it's mad expensive. And then three, of course, I don't have enough money because it's mad expensive. So if these Patreon donations start kicking in, maybe I'll go. But yo, that's a really good question. That's actually one that's never been asked on Patreon before, so I appreciate it. Next up, we got Uliana Zanina. I believe I pronounced that one right. Would be interested in hearing your opinion. What's the best approach in fighting such crisis as COVID, nationalism, or globalism? Is there any contradiction between them in your opinion? So first off, I am nowhere near intelligent enough to be able to talk about how to handle this crisis and COVID situation. I do personally believe in the quarantining. I think that they need to be stricter with the quarantining. Texas is actually about to come out of quarantine right now. And I'm like, why the fuck for? We're still knee deep in this shit. But San Antonio's mayor and then the governor are just like, nah, that's fine. Y'all are good. Just go out. Just go out, have fun. But definitely quarantining. I work in a bank, so I have to go in. And it just boggles my mind the amount of people that come to the bank for like the most pettiest shit, like $50 from the teller. You could have done that at the fucking ATM. And if you couldn't do it at the ATM, what do you really need $50 for? You're not supposed to be going anywhere. So I do think that quarantining is definitely the most important thing. Everybody just needs to be on lockdown. And then after the incubation period, then we can consider like, then we consider reopening shit. And nationalism versus globalism is definitely a great question to ask a United States citizen because we're kind of very you know, patriotic and shit. I would normally say nationalism in most cases, but right now a pandemic is legit shit. So we got to worry as a, as a, as a whole race, as the human race, it's more important right now than whether the fuck or not, I believe in the second amendment. It doesn't matter if I believe in the second amendment, if I'm fucking dead, the virus knows no race. You know what I'm saying? But that's a good question and I appreciate it. I was not expecting a question of that nature whatsoever, but I appreciate your Patreon subscription as well, ma'am. Really means the world. Next up, we got Dave Amstutz. Amstutz. And Dave asks, during your videos, you display an amazing skill of recalling lyrics from other raps that may have had a similar theme as the current video you are breaking down. Can you actually recall any rap that you have heard or do you edit once you have gone back and looked up those lyrics? I'll look up the lyrics if I don't remember like precisely what it is, but I normally do it on camera. You'll see me like bust out my phone and do it. But I would say like 95% of the time, it's me just remembering the lyrics right off the top, especially if I'm doing Eminem and relating it to an old Eminem song. And I know a lot of people have a hard time believing it, but if you ask anybody that's close to me, a lot of people have always told me that I'm just like a musical jukebox. Like I'll just rattle off a lyric. If something that they say in the sentence that they're speaking to me, if something they say, even two words just strings together and sounds like a song that I know from 20 years ago, I'll just rattle it off like right there in front of them. It's always, it's always been something that I had. And to be honest, I thought that everybody could do that until the one I started seeing people like, yo, you're, you're amazing at breaking down these lyrics. I appreciate it. It really helps me understand the music better. I either get that comment or I get just as flattering of a comment, but in the negative direction where they say there's no fucking way that you're remembering these lyrics. There's no way you're deciphering and catching these bars this quick. When I get those comments, those are even more flattering than the ones that are actually positive because I'm like, oh shit, you don't think that I'm capable of it. That means it must not be easy to do, but it just happens to be easier for me. So really the people that are saying that, even though they're trying to give me negativity, they're actually feeding my positivity even further. That's a good question though, because I don't think I've ever addressed it directly in a video before. I've mentioned it in comments, but not everybody reads those. So here I am telling you, like it's not, I don't, I rarely ever look up lyrics. And people say that I'll go to Genius to look up the lyrics before making the video when a lot of songs that I'm doing, especially if they're newer, the Genius lyrics haven't even been updated yet. They haven't, they haven't had annotations yet. And sometimes the annotations on the Genius lyrics are fucking so far fetched, like, it's the biggest reach I've ever seen, like Stretch Armstrong type of reach. So you can pretty much take genius annotations with a grain of salt just because everybody interprets a different way. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate the question, man. Also, again, I appreciate your subscription. Keeps me in front of the camera. I don't know. I can't stress that enough that Patreon is definitely the thing that's keeping me in front of this camera as often as I am. Next, we got Hannah Kate, Discord's favorite psychologist slash counselor. Hannah, again, is the reason why I took that personality test. So Hannah, again, I appreciate your long time patreon subscription i appreciate that what you provided discord as well as the youtube community speaking of community dope ass show but hannah asks if you could know the answer to any one question about the future what would it be you would ask a question like this that's all that i gotta say let me think 
the hell kind of like introspective philosophical question I'm supposed to answer right off the cuff? Definitely not how do I die? It sounds like it's fun so that way you can get all the shit that you want to get out. But then I would have crazy anxiety as that day approaches. Just live every day like it's your last and you don't got to worry about getting all the shit out before you die, you know? Okay, my answer actually relates to YouTube. I would want to know how successful I actually could be on YouTube. How much money could I actually make from YouTube? Is it enough to sustain my life? Is it enough to give me a better life than what I thought fathomable? To where I don't have to work. I can just be in front of this camera, banging out like two, three, four videos a day, making a podcast, having this whole like network around the third earnest, third earnest studios or some shit. But that would be the one question that I wanna know. Is this more like a hobby, like, like side money, something that I do for y'all, something that I do for me as a creative outlet, or is it actually a viable career? Because if it is, then I would wanna know what I have to do to make that work. But Hannah, I appreciate Appreciate your introspective question. I don't know why I expected anything else from you, but appreciate it, girl. Next up, we got Robert Phillips. Robert and Hannah, I guaranteed 100% I didn't screw those names up. But Robert Phillips, once again, I appreciate the donations that you're giving to me on Patreon. It means you find value in my content means that you find value in what I'm doing and see potential in the future, because I know I wouldn't be giving anybody money unless I saw that value in that person. So it really means a lot to me that you decided to subscribe on Patreon. Robert asks, how did you get here? I'd like to hear your background, what your musical history is, and how you ended up on YouTube doing these parentheses, really awesome reactions. I appreciate the parentheses. And when it comes to my background and my musical history and all that, I have zero knowledge. I at least have zero actual educational training in it. I did the normal musical route that people go, like when they're trying to figure out what they like and their hobbies are. I played clarinet, I played piano, I played percussion all in like middle school. Taught myself how to play Moonlight Sonata and all that, all just straight up just teaching myself on a keyboard. But other than that, I have no real like classical teaching of music. I kind of just all learned on the go as, as I went. And the only background that I have that kind of like solidifies what I do here on YouTube is the fact that I am an extremely, extremely good writer. And I'm not saying I'm out here like, well, Whitman or anything like that. I'm just out here like I'm just a decent writer just naturally. And because I have that instinctive knack like that naturally just above par, like way above average writing capability, I think that translates into me understanding really well and retaining lyrics and understanding why people write in the certain ways that they do these songs. Because like I said before, I thought everybody listened to music and understood the bars and understood the references and the similes and rhyme schemes and metaphors and just like wordplay to the different ways that you can say certain things to make it more poetic to make it flow better I thought everybody just naturally understood that in the way that I did and it wasn't until I created this channel that I realized that I'm better than average at it and I'm helping people so that's an extremely long-winded answer to I'd like to hear your background and what your musical history is but that's basically it and your how did I get here question and how did I end up on YouTube doing these quote-unquote really awesome reactions I got to YouTube because I was bored I wanted to teach myself a new creative outlet so I wanted to pick up the skill of editing and I wanted to like record myself. The very first video that I ever did was like on a steady cam with like the flip out screen when I went to go see Lupe Fiasco with my cousin in Houston. I made like a documentary basically of our trip. Years later, I'm like, damn, I want to actually learn how to edit footage because I went to EDC with my brother and I wanted to know how to like piece together like a recap so we could show our friends and everything. So then I did that. And after that first year, I completely learned how to edit literally just watching YouTube videos all about how to edit. And that's literally all I would do when I would get home from work, four hours of YouTube, just soaking it all in. And then I did my second EDC video, and then I was like, oh shit, this EDC video is way better. This is like something that, this was something that I would watch if a stranger made it and showed it to me. And then that's what kind, kind of got me hooked on it. So I wanted to start vlogging. I wanted to start doing all those different kind of things. You can go back, you know, like all the videos are still there. You can go back on the channel. There's a vlogs playlist. There's a random videos playlist where I was kind of like just doing different creative things to get my creative outlet out. And then on a fateful night at a Mexican restaurant in San Antonio, Texas at my goddaughter's third birthday party, I had one too many frozen margaritas from one of the best places that makes some of the strongest margaritas. Came home, was kind of still vibing from the margaritas, saw that Eminem released Kamikaze, saw people reacting to
to it and this was the very first time that I actually seen people react. So I was sitting there watching like kind of drunk, like, oh, this is cool, this is cool, but oh, why didn't he talk about that bar? Oh, why did they, is he missing these bars? Like, well, what the fuck's going on? You know what, I could fucking do this. I could do this better than that. Boom, brought out my camera, brought out this microphone and then I got subscribers from it. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe I'll just make a little reaction here and there. And then Killshot dropped. And when Killshot dropped, I was like, oh, I definitely got to react to this because Eminem is the goat of like, this is. So I reacted to that and then boom, that one like blew up. I blew up for back then at least. I think it got like 5,000 views in the first week. And I was like, holy shit. 5,000 views in a week? So I was like, you know what? Let me just keep making these reactions, making these reactions. Let me upgrade the audio quality of the actual songs. Let me upgrade the audio quality of the mic. Let me learn how to edit a little bit of audio so the quality of the videos went up, but my reaction was still the same. And then people started to realize that I had this talent for it. And then the subscriber numbers kind of just like went and then the search dropped and I had never heard of NF and everybody was going wild. And I was like, what's this about? And then boom, NF like brought me like a thousand subscribers like in a week or overnight. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And then that's when I realized that he had a whole storyline behind all of his music videos. And that's my shit. Whenever people have like songs that relate to other songs and it's like one long complicated like conceptual story. And that's when I was like, let me go down this NF rabbit hole real quick before the album comes out. And then I started to get subscribers, started to get subscribers. And then we ended up here somehow. And it might feel like I right now I'm sitting at 82,000 subscribers. It might feel like for a lot of people watching that it happened overnight. We're talking about like, this is a span of like a year and a half. I look back on my Instagram when I posted, when I had 4,000 subscribers, I was pumped. I was like, holy shit, I got 4,000 subscribers. This is more than I ever would have thought I could even fathom getting. 4,000 people are watching me on the internet. 4,000 people want to get notifications of when I post videos because they find value in the entertainment that I'm providing. I was like, holy shit, this is mind blowing to me right now. Let me go ahead and put this on Instagram and be like, yo, peeps, check this out. That was literally a year ago. So in one year, I went from 4,000 subscribers to 82,000 subscribers. And that's just like all the hard work that I've put into it. It's a lot of fucking work. You don't realize how much it is, especially for the way that I do my reactions. I try to make it as jam packed as possible where there's no stops in what I'm saying. I might stop the video a lot because that's just the way that I do it, but I'm providing a lot of feedback and all that thinking, all that editing, all that, just making sure that the video is very high quality from the production side. That's what I'm trying to do to set myself apart, uh, obviously along from the different reactions, but that's how I ended up here. Another long winded answer to your question. It's been a journey. It hasn't been overnight. It's not going to be for everybody. You definitely have to have a passion for it because if you don't have a passion, it will show through in a video, but it's been well worth every second, especially now that I've kind of, I'm like reaping the benefits of all the hard work that I put in. Super long winded answer because you asked a very, yes, a very personal question, but I appreciate it, man. Next, we got Allison. Allison, I appreciate your subscription as well. As always, you just got a first name. You're like share up in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? My question is, how long will tier four of the Patreon be sold out for? Actually, tier four of the Patreon is probably gonna change because I can't keep up with the Patreon request. I, I made it to where each individual will get a request a month. And 15, I did the math, I'm like 15. I only make 25 videos a month. All the new music comes out and then a lot of new music in a row. And then the Patreon requestions just sit there in the back burner, just piling up. So the Patreon number four tier, the, the one that gets the request, that's probably gonna change just because I can't keep up with the demand of that and make the channel and make sure I have control of the channel. And I don't know what I'm going to do with that tier. I don't know what I'm going to do to replace the request, but it might not be what you want to hear, but the $30 price tag for that tier, it's actually extremely undervalued. The supply is short, the demand is high. So obviously the invisible hand of commerce means that I should move the price up, but I don't want to do that. But at the same time, I can't feel like I'm failing y'all guys by pushing y'all's reactions and pushing them and pushing them. I don't like that feeling either. So I gotta, I gotta come up with something where I can, where I can find a happy medium. So I guess TBD on that question, that didn't really answer it, but yo, Allison, I really appreciate your subscription either way at the tier that you are at. It means the world. But that's it for all of the Patreon questions. Next, we move on to the Discord questions. And for some reason, I don't know why I feel like this, but Patreon's questions, I don't know why, but they seem like they're, I'm getting like a more civilized vibe from the Patreon. It's more calm. It's not, it's not the hectic nature and it's not like the it's not the cutthroat nature of what the discord is patreon is like me walking into a speakeasy ordering my old-fashioned you know dressed up a little bit while discord seems like i'm just going to the, the hood bar right here the local hood bar ordering the the bud light and it's like lukewarm that's what discord is compared to patreon it feels like 